this I had posted to you, Ad versus Heresies, I believe, um, I realized I did not consider my audience during my first response, and I apologize, and I will need to go into further details. So, here we go. Why I Don't Believe in God 101. Um, Ad Heresies, if I got that right, Ad versus Heresies. Um, the first flaw in the argument you made to my post was that the church doctrine you're speaking of was written by, quote, priests and bishops, the same people you just wrote not to turn to and to turn to the doctrine or the actual documents. Um, I'd like to direct you to the Lost Sea Scrolls. Um, as I mentioned in the first um, video, and what I guess I didn't explain clearly enough was... I had always, always questioned it, faith. I questioned everything. It did not make sense. Nothing added up to me. But when you're a little child, you believe everything you're told. Um, you believe everything your parents tell you. You, especially every authority figure. I mean, I'm talking back when you're like the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus and those silly things, you know. And then you're told that if you even question that you don't have faith and that God can read all of your thoughts. And so that basically brainwashes young children, um, not um, by the people who do it, they don't do it on purpose. They don't realize what they're doing. Um, the mass, the most the majority, obviously, you know. Um, but you were brainwashed as a child um, into believing all these things and if you question it then as I said in my first video I go home and my nice little prayers before bed were always asking forgiveness for the thought popping into my head wait a minute this doesn't make sense like they just said this and then they said that and they don't equal each other um, I did a lot of research however because um, I think a lot of people, um, especially children and then it seems adults too, um, they don't want to be different. And my entire family was very strict Catholic. My, I went to Catholic school since I was a little kid, church. Um, my whole entire family on my father's side is crazy Catholic, I mean by the book Catholic. And the town is at least Christian and everybody around me. And you don't want to stand up and say, hey, like, you guys see anything wrong with this? Doesn't this seem a little silly? And then I think when you get to be an adult, you don't want to be different either, and you don't want to, like, bother your parents or anything. So you just kind of look the other way and put your head in the sand and just go, go along and not think about it. But I thought about it a lot, and I needed to prove that I was right that it wasn't just um, being rebellious or um, just trying to find some way out of being a good person. I don't know. I've always wanted to be a good person. Well, anyways, I had to prove it to myself. Um, so I went and I researched. And the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, I'm not going to do your research for you, but um, a summary is it was found in the 1940s um, near Jerusalem, I believe, and um, the person who found it was um, a native, I guess um, a Palestinian we call him nowadays, um, and he made the mistake of bringing it to the Catholic Church, <laughs> who covered it up and didn't tell of the existence, so I believe the 80s, they first started being allowed to decipher it, and when I was studying, it was about 10 years ago, so the, you might find a lot more. But um, what they had deciphered at that point was that it was an actual scroll written um, a lot closer to the time period uh, that the, if Jesus, in fact, was a person, would have existed. And the, the literature you were referring me to go to, I have never heard disputed, was written a good 200 years at least after um the supposed um, resurrection of Jesus. And I don't think I have to explain why I would um, believe something that was written 
by people who say they had first-hand knowledge and actually were the followers of a person named Jesus and that the dating of scientists um, put it much, much closer to when anything else in history can be put together. I think it's, um, gosh, King Harold. I think that's the closest they really can pinpoint like when this person was supposed to exist. So if you go to objective historians who look through everything they can find in history or whatever, okay, there might have been a person named Jesus who lived around that time with King Harold who was a political activist. He did not like the corruptness of the church. If there's anything accurate in that Bible, it's likely him going into the temples and overthrowing all the money changers. Um, he wanted to... He was standing up for, um, to use current events, the 99%. He did not like that a few rich, corrupt, elite people were taking his people and just selling them over to the Romans. And he stood up to them, and they didn't like that. So um, what they did was they, anybody else who rebelled against the state, or whatever they called it, the empire, they, they actually hung them upside down and they burned it, I believe. And that is what they did to all the traitors. Um, so, according to the Dead Sea Scrolls, or what they've deciphered, um, a small sect of his followers, who, um, if any other part is somewhat accurate, that he died for all of our sins, as you said before. He didn't die for my sins. I, or at least this body, I was not anywhere near here 2,000 some years ago. But you could say he died for all the sins of his followers or everyone else in the movement um, because he was the only one put to death. They all fled to an island. And um, I won't tell you the rest of it. It's actually kind of interesting. Um, basically, they all live like Jesus said, and I wish people would. Um, they refuse to hurt other people, turn the other cheek, the golden rule, all the great things that um, I'd say... Um, a great man, just like Martin Luther King or Gandhi, whatever category you want to put those people in, I consider them prophets, um, not the sense that you do, but I consider George Carlin a prophet, Bill Hicks a prophet, but um, anyone who is got a mind who can see into the future and above all of the little bullshit that goes on in everybody's little lives that they think is so important and can see the big picture, I consider a prophet. And anyways, um... I stopped believing in God. I don't know if I ever really did. I think I forced myself to try really, really hard. And finally, it just was like, this is ridiculous. I know that I have good thoughts. I know I'm intelligent. I know I reason. I know I have logic. I've done all this research now. Nobody can accuse me of anything except that by the facts that I have researched, and I mean, it goes back further. I mean, obviously, or sorry, not obviously, I keep forgetting my audience. Um, the Christian religion is very obviously plagiarized by many religions before it. Um, you can say the Son of God um, comes from the pagans and many other religions. Um, we worship the Son. Um, there's also a metaphor um, I kind of wanted to bring up about God, or Jesus saying he was the son of God it might actually be somewhat accurate, but it, in the Bible, literally, it says we are all the sons and daughters of God. So Jesus likely would have been spreading that. Um, not that just he was the son of God, but everybody was, and that we should all come together as one and, and not hurt each other you know we should help each other and we're one we're one we're all the sons and daughters of God or it just fits in too I mean the sun was worshiped because it came up it gave warmth it grew food um, anyways I'm not gonna do everybody's research for them I, I hope you do um, look into it but uh, you're really, you really confuse me because I understand that you're saying that the Catholic bishops and the Catholic whatever, and they're not teaching 
yeah, they're not. They are so not teaching anything what they are. If Jesus was down here, um, I, I'm going to request for him. Um, please stop celebrating his birthday like the way you all do. Like, <laughs> he'd hate it. He would hate it. I mean, commercialism, he'd be in the malls like the money changers and trying to topple over the registers. And you guys just make a mockery out of it. Um, there's nothing what he stood for. If you If you want... To celebrate Jesus' birthday, you should go and do what he advocated and what he was killed for. And if he was if he was killed for all of our sins, the sin was that no one would stand up with him. Nobody would go, hey, this isn't right. This is wrong. I'm going to stand up. I'm not going to be scared anymore. I'm going to say what's right. And I'm going to help people. I'm going to help the needy, the sick, the poor. Um just we're all one and be nice to each other and and right now I just can't even think of a better metaphor than the 99% uh, the whole thing that's going on right now Occupy Jesus would Jesus is anonymous basically right now in my mind if you had to um, put him as somebody if you really need to do that I think you should just study history learn from it try not to repeat the mistakes which is why um, I've turned this into actually um, somewhat of an advocate um, reply. Um, I think if you really truly believe that you're a Christian, I challenge you to do your research and think deeply into yourself. What, what would Jesus do right now, those stupid WWJD crap? But what would Jesus do? And go do it. Go. Go stick up for people. Go stick up for people who can't stick up for themselves. That's what you'd be doing. And when somebody's getting, um, being peaceful and someone's not being peaceful back to them, you go be peaceful with them. You go show them this is the way. And thank you. And if you didn't understand that, I'm sorry. All I was really saying before about I was lucky at the time I was brought up. I always questioned it. I just feel that it would, I came to be able to say I'm right and everybody around me is wrong. My parents, my grandparents, my family, my friends, my entire town practically. Two Catholic churches in a town of 11,000 people, okay? Like, I'm the one who's right and everyone else is wrong is a very difficult thing to come to. And so I am grateful that, um, as you say, they changed, or the liberalism of the second doctrine of whatever, um, dude, they, if Constantine even really did change to Catholicism on his deathbed, go back and research what they did afterwards. I mean, those four gospels that don't even like add up, I mean, you couldn't even use them in a criminal investigation as eyewitnesses are so there's so many inconsistencies, and the reason is is because there was a lot more information that is now gone or buried under the Vatican with enough money to feed, clothe, educate the entire world, okay, easily, um, if they really did love and if they were good people and they weren't corrupt and just controlling the masses and, and not just a, a disguise for a business that is tax exempt and weans a lot of power. The Pope would be in jail right now if he did not own his own city state. And I want y'all to think about that one, okay? The Pope should be in jail and I would love someone to reply to me why the Pope should not be, okay? I just, I'm sorry, but that makes me angry and I would actually I love to hear it. it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I kept it under 15 by like 40 seconds. 